Good morning. My name is Trang Pham Nguyen and welcome to another episode where I get a metaphysical reading. So today I'm getting a tarot reading from Ananda Milia who I found through Facebook. And if you need a visual reference as you listen into this episode, click in on the link below to see the image of the cards that were pulled up for my reading. And before we begin, don't forget to click that like button down below and hit subscribe. So let's see what comes up. Okay. Such a new function. Um, so I'm a little informal on how I do this, so I don't want you to think like, okay, at what point is this going to happen? So I like to focus on the dialogue that's happening. Um, I try not to make it a, a whole broken up, like, okay, now we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Um, I kind of try to move with like whatever energy is present right now. Um, so I guess uh, I'll start with like the question is like, you know, how are you today? where <laughs> where are you right now um I guess I just want to get a sense of like you know how are you in this moment what is it that you are hoping um to bring to this tarot reading and um you know if you have any questions also in there about my process or what I can offer you um please let me know as well okay I am um, I think yeah, what I'm looking for, I'd say, is usually just more of kind of like the theme for, I guess I'm going to say each month for the year, but kind of like kind of like what a general reading for the year would look like. For example, um, right now it's in June. So like in July, there might be some tension between X, blah, 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 you know, watch out for that. Or, you know, um, or like September, that's when things are starting to look up, you know, kind of like things like that, I guess, kind of like mm -hmm. month by month play if that makes sense I don't know if that's yeah. like what you do like like so you're it sounds like you're interested in a forecast right now and like okay how can I prepare for like you know what's ahead now that June is coming to a close yeah mm -hmm. awesome okay <laughs> But we are going to start in the middle. So that's, like I said, the spiral, it moves in a spiralic energy. So um, where you see the Ace of Wands turned on its side and it's overlaying the High Priestess, I gave you two separate pictures so you could see the cards side by side and then how they appear in the spread that I'm looking at. Um, and so the High Priestess is the energy, it's like where you are right now. And the Ace of Wands is that's like an energy you're carrying with you. Um, and it's, it, they're a bit like um, contrasting, right? If, if we know a little bit of the high priestess, it's a very internal energy. And it's a, it's a period where we're like, we're within ourselves and a lot of listening and reception ha happens versus activity and doing, um, which is very much the nature of Ace of Wands. So together, this shows me that as June is coming to a close, um, that so is that feeling of in inwardness might also be coming to a close for you. It sounds like you are already like, you know, putting the feelers out and um, kind of there's this anticipation of work to be done that you are ready to kind of pick up the energy in July. And you might already have, I mean, I know you just launched the course. So with that, I know there's like, there's all the marketing and the networking that happens just to keep that momentum going. And so I think the high priestess really kind of represents maybe the whole process it took you of just completing that course being it's very inwards and now the birthing the birthing and I see that with the waters breaking through which feels really appropriate with cancer season people see it as a very internal time um but I think the sun being in cancer is like it's like that invitation Cancer gets to be in its shell 11 months out of the year <laughs> when the sun is focused on other zodiac signs. And for its, you know, for those 28 days, Cancer, we're asking you to shine. So I, I kind of, I like to see things always the opposite as the rest of the culture sees it. Um, so yeah, that, that might, we might come back to that as other cards give us more information. Um, but that's kind of the general um, idea of that section that I'm going to give to you. And then everything will build off of it. Okay. Um, and then would you say like that's like that resonates with you or there was, there's elements you take away or you would add to? Yeah, I, I, I was, it's funny when you were, 
saying all that, even before you were saying all that, you're like, oh, the high priestess is what you're going through and the Ace of Wands is the energy you're going to. And I'm looking at the imagery. I really love the imagery of your cards, by the way, of the tarot wave. Thank it's you. actually a different design. It's really nice because I feel like it captures the the essence of the feeling, especially like the flames, I guess, or I guess it says in that, yeah, the flames in that Ace of Wands. Like I really do feel that fire, you know? And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I like this because yeah, it's the imagery definitely resonates with it. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, I I love this deck because it has like a children's storybook kind of feel to it, and it, some of the more difficult cards look more or less triggering than like the Smith Rider Waite might present it as. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I just, I like using it for people because they don't feel so like, oh wait, I pulled the death card. <laughs> Um, okay, so now so we're going to drop down to the two cards below this section. So you'll see two cards in reverse. There's a Ten of Wands and a Nine of Swords. Okay, I see them. Um, so, yeah, and so this section is like things that are still happening below the surface. So we're going from like immediate self to like more subconscious self. Um, and right off the bat, I'm seeing that like there's a kind of like a big load of energy that's being released <laughs> also almost like a sense of relief um I don't read ne uh, reversals as like negative or positive experiences to me it's usually like we're either still moving through that energy or um, we get to come out of it um seeing these both in reverse I'm seeing that like not just the workload kind of coming off I think with like the completion of something the completion of the last month um but like kind of the emotional mental stress that accompanies that kind of energy output is also being released with it so the hardest work seems like it's been done it doesn't mean that there's no work ahead but when i see the ten of wands it to me it really signals that like the hardest part of whatever it was you were moving through is currently passing you might still be feeling like the shadow of it or its remnants residual energy but um i think it's also kind of as the nervous system resettles and it can like really trust <laughs> it can trust that like okay it's done and i can actually settle into my body again is what's happening um i know that's an experience i have especially when i'm like in full force mode where i'm like is this is this the real thing did i really complete it i don't know but i'm gonna kind of stay on my toes <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, I'm going to move over to the next section because it, I mean, that kind of just seems very thorough that I don't need to over elaborate. Um, so then you'll see Prince of Pentacles and the Five of Wands. So we're moving counterclockwise. Okay. And this section is like, what can we use some of our energy right now? Like, where can we actively put our focus? In the coming month um the princess princess of pentacles um this card illustrates it as an actual like pregnant woman who's close to being ready to like give birth um and that kind of goes with the theme of what i was saying about high priestess that there's definitely like a birthing ready to happen like a, a big release um but what it's not as fiery like I said, the Ace of Wands isn't, the energy isn't as tense as intense as Ten of Wands. I would say Aces are more like a natural energy that's just like moving through your life versus Ten of Wands is like you're actively participating in that energy and like, you know, by the will of God, putting everything you can into something. Um, Prince of Pentacles, Princess of Pentacles is both receptive and active. So it's receiving what is already naturally there um, and just meeting it meeting it in a way like understanding this is how much opportunity is coming and i'm gonna flow with it i'm not gonna like push push myself like in ten of wands past past any kind of breaking point it's, this like opportunity doesn't require super human strength i think it's also a nod to like you're in alignment with your work i don't know if you're, if you're getting other confirmation from your spirit guides and forms of synchronicity this might just be like an added kind of that added like like as the way things are keep moving with that um and then we see five of wands above that um 
So this, like I said, like how I mentioned, you still have work, but it may not be the same like quality of work that you have to do. Um, it also seems like it's gonna be that it's no longer just work like solo by yourself, that you will be interacting with other, other energies um, in the coming months. Um, and it's, I like to read this five of wands as conflict towards resolution. So it's never just conflict for the sake of conflict. Um, I love how the little white book describes this card because they're actually engaging in a, it's an African stick fight. I think it's called Donga. And so it's, it's actually a coordinated fight. Um, it's, it's a sporting game of theirs. And so it's, it is an actual like battle or a war with an enemy, but it's like working with other energies that are supportive towards like your, your bigger vision um, and just kind of like fine tuning things that you are just trying to get more. Like I said, Prince of Pentacles is that confirmation that you are in alignment. And then Five of Wands is like kind of the effort we put in to remain in alignment. Like it is, we, we know at this point, it's not just given to us. We have to participate with opportunities and resources. And so that's like um, really the emphasis that I, I'm interpreting from this section is that the work is more so knowing how to work with the energy and also doing work to receive it. I think a lot of people think the work is about how we do it, but it's like, okay, well, how do I receive an opportunity? How do I like, how can I trust that I'm where I need to be? Does that make a bit of sense for you? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> so moving with that, <laughs> I'm going to take um, our focus up to the very top. So these two cards, these are the opportunity cards, resources that are that are um, present right now. That um, <clears throat> if you, so we know what kind of like the work is in the previous section, and so now we're trying to see like what is that energy that we can also bring into that work. So I'm going to read these two cards together. So with Eight of Wands and Five of Pentacles, I'm seeing a little bit of a burnout. So there's potential for burnout. <laughs> um, especially like also knowing that so we see the Five of Wands, right? The strife that if we go a little bit past then like what energy is coming into our life that we can head into burnout if we're not really listening to, you know, the, or maybe not listening, it's more of like a feeling when you can kind of feel the tempo. I don't know if you are very sensitive to like the days of the week and then even the months out of the year. And you notice that, you know, within the, within these like sub seasons, they all have their different personalities, their own expression of their energies. And it's, sometimes we know that, but we don't always yield to it. And we convince ourselves, like, you know what? Like, it's not the time for that. I'm going to decide what it's the time for. And so <laughs> these two cards are kind of letting us know like, hey, <laughs> let's listen to the tempo of the season and let's move with that because even though you know ego might say like you are completely capable of pushing yourself um other factors are going to come in and let you know <laughs> what you know what the season's about does that make how i worded that does that make sense yes okay cool cool um eight of wands also it's like typically when it's upright things are very clear and straightforward for us. And so when things are clear and straightforward, it's really easy to get into like full on hustling mode because you're just trying to like, you know, use that opportunity. In reverse, things aren't always so clear. We don't feel it channeling through us as loudly as we would like it to. Um, and so I kind of see like a ricochet between eight of wands and five of wands happening. where there's like a lot of push pull where you're like, I really want to work, but I don't really know what to work on. <laughs> and so I'm going to bring us all the way back down to where we saw the two reversed cards of nine of swords and 10 of wands, where the nervous system is still settling itself. And so you actually, that kind of like impulse to want to do more might be residual impulses from that, from those two cards. So my um, suggestion is, 
you know, what are your practices that really ground you back into your body? What are things that help you to really just um, process it? I would, I would say what really helps with my body would be um, breath work for sure. Awesome. Yeah. I would do. Do you ever do the, I know there's like that cleansing breath in yoga where it's called fire breath, I think. Oh yeah. Um, I do. Well, I do like this quick 11 minute. Cause sometimes I'm like, I just got to squeeze it in for the day. I actually did it right around. I rolled out of bed. Um, it's uh, the Wim Hof. Oh yeah. Yeah. To go yeah. in like to really cold places. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he like, I, like could hike without like pants on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it's only 11 minutes and, um, and that's very like doable, really short and doable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I would, I'm going to hold you accountable to doing that 11 minutes a day. Yep. Um, and so that I think will help. Um, also shaking, shaking helps. That's something I learned from my mentor who does a lot of somatic body work. Um, and that's something that comes, that's observed in nature. Like after a, a cheetah kills its prey, the first thing it does is it shakes from head to tail. And that's actually the animal's way of resettling its nervous system. So along with the, the breathing, right? Because that's another big thing animals do in the wild is just like finding ways to shake out any extra energy because that, that all that comes from like that fight or flight that really gets us like riled up. Um, and so I think that can kind of help with that section of five of wands and eight of wands where that kind of ricochets back and forth. Because um, I really see the the Princess of Pentacles saying like, you're moving on organic time. And I think that's really what um, the pregnant belly represents mm -hmm. is that like, you know, when the baby's ready, it'll be ready. We don't have to induce anything. And you will also know when it's ready. Like if you can just trust, you know, your body's intelligence, you can trust, you know, how you feel confirmation in you. Then if you can move with that, it will happen in a way I'm going to, I'm going to bring you over now to the last few cards where we see eight of pentacles. Um, and you see that figure picking a fruit off the tree. Yeah. It will happen in a way that it's essentially like low hanging fruit, like where the, oppor the opportunity opens itself up to us versus the experience of eight of wands where we're really trying to push it, we're trying to push it, push it, push it. And everything in us is like saying it's not time. It's not time, but you know, the head gets really loud and it's like come on let's go time we can do it yeah. um, so I would say the really big theme that's happening is it, it's a, I mean I'm seeing definitely with the extremes of high priestess and the ace of wands it's like a middle ground between those two extreme energies <laughs> where one side of us is like I'm ready and the other side is like but I'm not <laughs> and I will be ready when it's like more of the divine timing side that's like I will let you know when things are ready um, and if we can just move with that, with that patience and that it's a more like radical trust, um, that it's fruitful. It will be a fruitful process. It's also saying like, that even if you push things, even if you decide like, you know, I'm not going to listen and I'm just going to push it and go at the speed I want, it will still be fruitful. But the quality of how you experience that, it will be experienced in that five minutes five of one, um, excuse me, five of pentacles energy where you're, you're just almost too burnt out to really enjoy the fullness of the new experience. Um, and so, so yeah, eight of pentacles. I always like to see that as like this low hanging fruit experience, um, that if we, you know, participate with the opportunity, we participate with the energy that like, it will meet us. We, like we just have to trust that it's there to meet us. Um, and then it's going to bring us down to the King of Cups. Um, so I'm like, I like seeing the similarity and imagery between the High Priestess and King of Cups. Because I'm, what I'm seeing is that complete integration with the Eight of Wands energy. Is that like moving with like, you know, all this, doing the breath work, settling yourself, trusting your divine timing. It will bring you to a King of Cups energy for the following month um where you're moving from a place of it's like moving from within to the out versus like from like out and pushing yourself um so i see like so we see that the king of cups is very much in motion but still very much in that watery realm just like the high priestess 
And so they know how to use um, that fire energy, but without burning themselves out, right? And I like how there's the, the crab in his chalice, because it's like, you know, to me, that's like, <laughs> that's how um, cancer season really shines, is that it moves from this, you know, very deep emotional energy and embodied strength versus um, you know, Gemini season can be very cerebral. And I know we also like moved out of a retrograde where, you know, things kind of slow down, slow down in the body. So we were a lot more in the mind. Um, so I think cancer um, season has a great opportunity for you to learn that integration between trust, between taking our time um, and kind of like everything you were sharing with the the chemicals in our body right and like knowing that everything moves at its own pace and that like there's different archetypes of energy um is there anywhere else you need clarification um no it really sounds like uh more like um divine timing type of things like things play out whether it's happy healing shop related or or, or um my job search related yeah 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 <clears throat> was there anything you'd want to like take away or add to um, that you felt like oh, okay I can start to imbue some of like my own insights into this? Um, I'm, I mean I like where you said it. Um, I have to look at the playback. It's one of those things you know when you, you yeah. <laughs> look back, you're like oh yeah that's a quote I was looking for. Uh, <laughs> um, oh gosh, it was something you just said like 30 seconds ago too, where it was uh, sorry in the morning my brain's like not functioning. You can tell of like course. my you can tell in the webinar my energy was like a different level. You know like very yeah, yeah. like yeah. And now you see me like right when I roll out of bed. <laughs> um, it oh, you just oh, what did you say? It was like 30, oh, it was 30 seconds ago. It was something you said. Where I was like oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Like, <laughs> like what you said. Now I'm like, okay, I have to look at the playback again, but it's, yeah. it's, um, oh, okay. No, no worries if you can't grab it. The fact is, is like it, it hits you in the moment and needed to, and yeah. it will be there when you replay all of this. But I'm glad that like it was able to touch on a lot of these points for you. Um, because I am seeing when I look at the overall theme, up until we get to the last two cards, there's a lot of, there's like fire in your reading. Every section has a bit of fire in it. Um, one fire card accompanied by another card. Um, are you a fire dominant person by any chance in your astrological chart? Um, I'm not sure. I am more, let's see here. Let me see if I can remember. I'm, I'm an earth sign. I'm a Capricorn. Uh, Let's see here. Capricorn, sun sign, uh, Aquarius rising, Cancer moon. And I think Venus is in Capricorn as well. But then I don't know about Mercury. and Yeah, uh, but Capricorn, is, it's got that very um, unrelenting energy. Like it's the yeah. goat that ascends the mountain. And so that's very, even though it's not necessarily an expression of fire, it's like Capricorns don't stop. <laughs> They don't, they don't eat, they don't rest until the job is done. And I think that makes them thrive in the workplace, but also like there's health issues come with that. And I know that cause I'm a Capricorn corn dominant person. And I, when I'm in the zone, I'm in the zone. Yep. Um, <laughs> Take advantage when you're in the zone because it doesn't yeah, last. <laughs> it doesn't last. And sometimes there's nothing inspiring you. You don't even know what to channel your energy into. So it's yeah. exciting when you have something to latch on to. And so it's a, it can be a little, I think, because Eight of Pentacles, I mean, Eight of Pentacles is also that receptive. I always see Pentacles as receptive, active, because there has to be like that, um, that combination of like the earthly seed, but then all the elements that need to be put into the seed to grow. So it, it grows actively, but not until it receives the nutrients that it needs. So it's kind of like a cliche theme, but I think really, I see the two cards that really stand out the most to me in your reading is the Eight of Pentacles and the Prince of Pentacles. Um, Cause there is like the doing of the work but then also like receiving the bounty of that work and also matching, you know, how we're nourishing ourselves to how hard we're working. So lots of nutritious meals, rest, 
sunlight, all the things that make our plants happy will also make us happy. <laughs> and let me see if I can see any other patterns in this reading. I guess like also I see with the high priestess touching the two pillars, we see a black one and a white one. Um, I kind of see that as her like touching kind of the extreme that we can live in sometimes if we're not in a place where there's a lot of integration happening or we're um, not doing the practice that the, the more nourishing receptive practices and we're still in like doing active um, mode. And so it's kind of, I kind of hear it, a hint of like, hey, like, <laughs> let's keep a hand on both worlds. Um, And usually for this, um, the way you lay out your tarot cards kind of like in a circular mm -hmm. way, is that how you do your readings for, um, let's say for whenever a client asks like any question? So like, for example, if someone asks a new question, you would scrap those cards and then you would do a new reading, but in the same, um, in the same style, or it really depends on like what you're feeling or it depends on the question. Yeah. So I, I always use this spread with people for the first reading I do with them. So this is like my peek under the hood because I think it touches a little bit of everywhere. And really the question that's being asked, um, it always shows up regardless of if they tell me before or after. I feel like the inquiry is always in us, even if we can't fully articulate it. I think just like that energy sits there and the cards pick up on it no matter what. Um, Follow-up readings are a little bit different because like if they do have a specific reading, then I will just select a reading off the top, a spread off the top of my head that I think can really speak to it. Um, it's easier to be more specific when I have a foundation to work with. Um, and that's just like my style. I'm a more pragmatic tarot reader than doing like, I mean, I love divination and I think for fortune telling is fascinating, but that's just like not my natural expression. So, um, so I guess, yeah, to answer your question is, yeah, I always use this spread and I just trust that like, even if they ask me a question after that, the spread can still speak to that question. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this was such a like concise reading. I don't even know what to, I mean, I, I know, there's I, some readings like that where it's like, you, it's like the message is pretty straightforward that you're like. Oh, okay. I guess there's no other, I have no other follow-up, you know, <laughs> I don't have anything else to expand on it or expand to ask on it, but, um, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think it's a vibe. I mean, you're not the typical person I work with. Most people are coming to the cards for the first time, or they don't have their own, like their own solid, like spiritual practices, or they don't have a spiritual business. Um, so they're not consistently doing the work all the time, but I, I can sense that like, as I'm talking, I don't need to over elaborate because you get it. <laughs> Yeah. And you have your own metaphor. You have your own metaphors, and so it's it's cool. It's a really cool experience for me to see what it's like to work with someone that's like on par with like how I'm moving through life. Right. So it's like, wow, I don't have to translate. I don't have like. <laughs> yeah, or you don't have to explain like, oh, the card, you know, it looks like that. It, it, what it means is this, you know. Yeah, someone mm -hmm. that's already got, like, familiar with the cards or the tarot week deck. Yeah. Yeah. And so I would say like that is like your your general forecast and I always tell people that like I mean you all you know this probably for yourself in your own way um that there is free will that's involved and so it's like our choice to move with that energy and to take advantage of certain opportunities or we can move in a di different direction and it doesn't say it doesn't mean that things can't be better it doesn't say that things can also be worse uh, but just based on like how questions were worded um and even just how i saw things from my perspective this is my interpretation um but this is a pretty i call it a thick and juicy reading so <laughs> um this spread usually i always tell people like it'll carry you for the next three to four weeks but there isn't like so much more to inquire past this um as i see it but do you have any additional questions for me any curiosities uh, no, I think, um, I think, uh, I guess like if I want another, if I want, if I asked you like, oh, what general advice is there for me? Cause obviously like before I asked you, this is more about like career and like mm -hmm. the next job at stuff. But if I was like, oh, 
you know, Ananda, just do a general reading for me and then tell me anything that you see that any messages I need to hear in general. Um, you know, I don't know if you would pull new cards or you would just kind of go off of the cards that you pulled already. Yeah, I could always pull. I'm actually shuffling my deck because I'm like, oh, I'm just going to pull another card for her. Um, <laughs> is that I... Yeah, kind of like um, almost like, oh, what messages you need to tell me right now? Or my spirit guides or team need to tell me. Yeah. Yeah, so I have your team right here in my hand. Yeah, <laughs> they are in reverse. Um, but this is your team right here. And so this is um, three of cups. And so Ooh. being in reverse. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but it's in reverse, right. <laughs> I like how they're, they're in reverse. bikinis. How cute. <laughs> they're in bikinis. They're enjoying themselves. We actually are coming out of the full moon energy, right? Um so I, I see this as I interpret this card in two different ways. So it's either you're not getting enough time with your peeps. So, you know, it, I think a good like antidote to overworking is just enjoying ourselves with our people. You know, who is that? Who is our tribe? Because those are the people that kind of take us out of working mode um, and allow us to be more present with like the other parts of us. Um, or it could also mean that we don't want to stretch ourselves socially as well. So there's also, it kind of comes back to that delicate balance <laughs> of like, you know, cause you can also take that Capricorn energy with you and just like overbook yourself. <laughs> and it's, it's that very, um, I want to say Capricorn has a lot of, because it's unrelenting, it's competitive. Um, but it won't do something just a little, it will do it to the whole mountain. Um, like, you know, it can never just be like a casual thing. Sometimes it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to do it to my best ability. I'm going to be as social as I can. And, you know, then you get to the day of, and you're like, why did I do that? Like, why did I have three events in one, one week? That was too much. <laughs> and so I think that could be the, um, you know, the overall theme of this card is, you know, if you find yourself that you're working too much, you know, go integrate into the community. If you find yourself being spread too thin socially, like you're just giving too much of your energy, um, you know, that's the medicine of cancer is like being able to go back into your shell. You know, just finding out when the time is right to be out and in, out and in. And I would say that would be the more like overall general message of this reading. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I don't have any other really further questions or um, that I can think of. I think I know this sounds like a really weird um, question. I'm sure you've been asked a lot, but I guess if you had if you had a a message for what um, I'd say, like a my community, like the Happy Healing Shop community, just pulling, um, or I don't know what yeah. you pulled, but just be like, hey, here's a little message for you guys. I would love to like, kind of yeah. see that. Yeah. For the peeps. <laughs> for the peeps, for your peeps. I mean, I just like love the name too. Happy Healing, Happy Healing. I don't know. Um, it's just one of those things when you, when it comes to you and you see it and you're like, I didn't even know I was looking for this, but like, there's like the Happy Healing shop <laughs> just yeah. I don't know it's it's so catchy I love it yeah, my business partner Maria she thought of that it, it came to her and I was like at first I was like oh we're not quite a shop but it, and then you know I said like let me think about it and then eventually I was like yeah no eventually we're going to expand to that so we can call that it could be like a one place stop shop for people getting readings you know in the future you know this is like five ten years but when it gets bigger or like yeah. even we sell products and whatnot from other uh, like um ethical vendors things like that it's like a yeah one stop shop place for metaphysical yeah. stuff yeah having a space just having like a mm -hmm. physical space i think so many of us are burned out from being on zoom like i really miss reading for people in person and I, I actually generally love virtual sessions i i think i channel better but i'm at the point where i'm like i just want a person in front of me it's been yeah. so long um so this is the card i pulled for happy healing shop i, so I have this in my peeps <laughs> yeah so this is for your peeps so this is um three of three of swords in reverse and so i see it as the swords coming out of the heart whenever i pull this card in reverse um, and that's like i mean i think that's like kind of the essence of happy healing shop is that we are healing our, our capacity to feel happiness um that overall so the overall message let me sit with this for a moment Yeah, 
think happiness isn't something that needs to be overthought. That like what your what happy the happy healing shop does is that it's it's a virtual space, yes, but what it is is that it's allowing us to create space within ourselves by providing resources, by providing modalities, you know, free webinars, um, so that people are equipped with the tools that they need to understand like, well, what does happiness mean to you? Because it's not like you ever define happiness on your website. It's never a clear and defined thing. It's more of like, here are the tools and resources for happiness and whatever that outcome is for you. Um, but it's not so, like I said, the swords, I see it as being something like of an explicit experience. Like, you know, some people are like, this is happiness and I'm gonna, this is my program, A, B, and C towards that. But instead it's like more on the peripheral of like what happiness could mean for somebody and there's so many ways to approach it um so i would say as long as that space i mean it's, it kind of reminds me of like when you go out when you go with your peeps right to hang out is that they're not telling you how to have a good time and they're not telling you what to do with your time with them um it's a very like it's like a natural synergy that you have with people and so this is more about that that synergy starts with yourself, right? So if we can understand the synergy we feel for ourselves, then you can take that to one sphere greater into your community. And I think the Happy Healing Shop does a really good job about providing tools and modalities that help us do the personal development work so we can have highly attuned um, social skills, right? <laughs> so we're not either spreading ourselves too thin, too, too thin or depriving ourselves of you know, the social attention that we do need. Does that kind of catch up on like what you were what you were asking? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Well, thank you so much for this reading, Ananda. Of course, it was it was a pleasure. It really was. This is really like synergetic, and I enjoyed it, and I loved how like it just flowed. So in Ananda's reading, what I really liked was the imagery of her cards and the energy it depicted, which I resonated with. And her spread layout was really interesting. And I can see how they connect together by the way she read it. And she does have this style where if you notice, she incorporates somatic body movement into her reading and her, I guess you can call it like advice. Um, and I can see how this would be great, especially for someone asking for health issues, probably. Again, always go to a medical professional first. This definitely was a different style from what I usually see in a tarot reading, where I'd normally ask a bunch of forecasting questions, like what does my career look like? What does my relationship look like? And everything look like future, future, future. And I can go and kind of go through a lot of topics in one hour, whereas this I feel is more of like discussing and expanding on one major topic. So let me know what you guys think. Comment down below your thoughts and more of what you'd like to see. And thanks for watching.